It's the holiday season, and we're not counting the days to Christmas. Instead, we're counting top five MVPs, top five teams, and, well, the worst of the bunch as well. We got all that and much more on this holiday edition crossover of Locked on NFL and Renner Ranks. You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, everybody, and welcome into this holiday special edition of the Renner Ranks podcast and the Locked On NFL podcast, your daily podcast, breaking down all the biggest stories from around the National Football League. And of course, your fantastic daily rankings podcast covering the NFL as well. We are your hosts today, Mike Renner at Mike Renner underscore on Twitter or whatever social media you're using these days, as well as, of course, host of the Renner Ranks podcast, myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson, Nola on your favorite social media. One of the NFL experts here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We appreciate you very much for being an everydayer and for making Renner Ranks Locked On NFL and all of our Locked On NFL shows your first listen of the day every day. We appreciate you very much for being here with us to bring in the holiday season. And Mike, to bring in that holiday season, we're going to be taking a look at the top five MVPs, top five teams, and the bottom five teams in this year's league. You ready to get it cracking, man? Let's do it. I feel like I'm getting called up to the big leagues here. Let's go. That's that's what we're talking (laughs) about. If anything, buddy, it's me getting called up to the big leagues. And speaking of the big leagues, we were talking about these top five MVPs, which I kept accidentally calling top five quarterbacks, but (laughs) kind of feels like a similar situation. So let's start at five. Countdown to the absolute best. Starting at five, who's your number five MVP candidate in this year's uh, sort of season thus far? I will say, if there was a year where a non-quarterback could crack into this mix, it is Feels this like year. It. Yeah, but it yeah. still is such a you know the quarterback is still so much more valuable than any mm-hmm. other position that I did have five quarterbacks here. And number five, I have Matthew Stafford, the Los mm. Angeles Rams quarterback. I, I think he single-handedly carried this Rams offense for a good portion of the year when they didn't have Cooper Cup, and now when Cooper Cup's back, he's the kind of guy who just. Basically, it doesn't matter the defense that he's going up against. And obviously, he's missed a few games this year. And when he was out, they were a disaster. But when he goes up against, and you saw it against the Baltimore Ravens, high-end defenses, Mm -hmm. they can still move the ball at a high clip. And that's something that not a lot of quarterbacks around the NFL can say. And now, still you know, not playing completely flawless football, but the high-end plays, the high-end drives that he's made on tape this year, definitely worthy of getting in that conversation, especially if they continue this strong second half of the season. Yeah, absolutely. He's feeling like that Super Bowl quarterback from a couple of years ago, flinging the no looks, diagnosing the defenses, looking really, really good. So Matthew Stafford at number five, which is a big departure maybe from where we might have expected him to be this season. Who you got at number four? At number four, I have Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens quarterback. And now the passing game numbers, passing game efficiency, it's not going to be as good as the other guys in this list, mm-hmm. list right? It, it just where he wins or where he changes the game is with his legs. I mean, 741 rushing yards this season, five rushing touchdowns, and you cannot account for how much he opens holes for guys like Gus Edwards and Keaton Mitchell in that backfield in the Baltimore Ravens. So, yeah, Lamar Jackson, like I said, a lot of things that he does for that offense can't necessarily quantify, has to be in that conversation right now. Yeah, the ceiling gets boosted big time when you've got the legs at the quarterback position, forcing defenses to defend 11 on 11. Going to be very curious to see how many styles of that type of quarterback, right, that that sort of prototype or archetype make this top five list amongst the quarterbacks that are on it because that sort of feels like that raises the ceiling for these guys. Let's get into our top three. Yeah, well, number three can run as well, and it's Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, 11 rushing touchdowns this season. He's second in EPA per drop back, and he's rising. I mean, these top Mm -hmm. three, I think it's going to be a dogfight to the end of the season if the Bills continue hot, because as much as, you know, it should be a season-long award, it is kind of a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately award. Sure. Josh Allen is on a tear right now, and that Buffalo Bills offense is on a tear. So, yes, Josh Allen, to me, has to belong in this top three. How much do you think that, like, an (laughs) offensive coordinator departure – impacts what Josh Allen like does it make what Josh Allen is doing even more impressive right now I well I I think very highly of Joe Brady so I don't think it makes sure I just think I just think he's enabled this offense to win in more ways than just Josh Allen right I I think early on in the season they tried to make him Superman and he can be at times but that was they would come and go as Josh Allen came and went now 
they can rely on James Cook in this running game if they want to. They can add mm -hmm. him onto the running game, Josh Allen, as well. So I think they basically have just given them a lot more outlets to move the football, and it's really just tapped into all the potential that's on this offense. Yeah, as a Louisiana guy, I'm a big Joe Brady dude as well. Shout out 2019, the most, oh. the, the just like the best year of all of our lives here since 2009. It's not a big deal. We get it. Uh, <laughs> let's look at number two on your list here. Top two are a dogfight, but this past weekend, uh, I guess Dak Prescott, he he, mm. he dropped down. He was number yeah, one yeah. heading into it. The games, everyone's going to keep going back to the 49ers game, the Bills games, the duds that he has on his resume at this point but still the, the the rest of the games it's almost like he either is god awful or he's just burying you and that's mm. been his mo this season he has been playing the best football i've seen from him in his entire career some super high end uh film that he's put out there this season unbelievable under pressure unbelievable feel from the pocket and it's been like a heavy drop back passing offense he's not getting the play action yeah. the yards after the catch that some of these guys are it's been all on him and he's delivered but I think too many people are going to believe or not believe, but remember those times that he didn't deliver because they were in the biggest stages this season. Yeah, that tends to be a huge, huge factor in this conversation for sure. So at number five, we looked at Matthew Stafford. Number four, Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. Number three, we stuck with a little bit of that mobility and Josh Allen over up in Buffalo, who's really kind of surging at this point. Number two, Dak Prescott. So that leaves number one on Mike Renner's list of Current MVP candidates, too? It's Brock Purdy, the 49ers quarterback. Look at quarterback. him. Look it's, at him. He's having an all-time season, Man. statistically. And you can say he's not putting as much on his plate as guys like Josh Allen, Dak Prescott are. And it's true. He does not have as much on his plate. He gets more help than any other quarterback in the NFL. But he's also performed at a higher level than any other quarterback in the NFL. And the duds we're talking about with Dak, with Josh Allen at times mm. this season – have not been there with Brock. We don't see them with Brock. Yeah. And, and truly, like for as much as he gets hated on, his processing and his accuracy underneath and his decision making has been lights out. Like he facilitates that offense. There's a reason why Jimmy G didn't get to this level. Matt Ryan didn't even get mm -hmm. to this level in Atlanta when they had comparable talent around them. It's because Brock Purdy is exceptional in that regard still. So he deserves number one as of now. But we still got a few weeks left here, Ross. We still got yeah. some time to make up our minds on this award here. Boy, but what a story that would be from Mr. Irrelevant to MVP. Ah, oh, man, you would just Kurt love to see it. Kurt Warner-esque, man. You would love to see it. So those are our top five MVP candidates. How many of the teams that they're playing for are also going to make the top five teams list? We got that coming up for you next as we continue on with this holiday special edition crossover episode, Locked on NFL and Renner Ranks. This episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book and our official sports betting partners here on the Locked On Podcast Network. You just heard Mike. He's got Brock Purdy, San Francisco 49ers quarterback, as his top MVP candidate. And you know what? FanDuel agrees. FanDuel's got him at minus 200 odds. So if you like those odds, Right now might be the right time for you to get involved over at FanDuel. But it's not just MVP odds. It's not just player props, things like that. They do have all that. But you're also going to be able to take a look at all the spreads across the NFL and other leagues as well. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's exactly where you want to get started because as a new customer, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets if you get any $5 Money line bet, correct. All you got to do is pick a team, and if that team wins with your $5 money line bet, boom, 150 bucks coming your way. So go and check them out today. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Mike, we're back at it here. Our special crossover edition here, getting you ready for the holidays. We counted down our list of top five quarterbacks, Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, uh, Dak Prescott, and then, of course, number one, the man himself, Brock Purdy. We said that with our chest, too. I absolutely love it. So let's take a look now at the top five teams in the NFL as we uh, kind of near the holiday season here. So again, let's start at five, count back down to one, the number five team for you right now in the NFL. I have to go with the Miami Dolphins here. Maybe it's a little oh. low on them considering they were the one seed until this past weekend sure. in the AFC. But 
they are they're a team that just no one wants to face. Uh, I think the big thing for them though will be home field advantage because yeah. Tua having to go on the road in January into an environment like Baltimore, into an environment like Buffalo. I don't think that ends well for him, right? I don't think bad weather <laughs> right. games are made for Tua and that arm, even with the weapons they have on the outside. But if they can play in Miami, if they're at home in the in the warm weather, that offense can light it up on anybody. And what they have is a strong running game as well. I think that gets lost in this. The fact that Green Mostert's first in rushing yards over expectation this year, and that offense can move the ball well on the ground, even if Tua isn't playing at his best. So I worry about the defense side of the ball a little bit. They've struggled at times this season. But that offense yeah. is still explosive enough to warrant top five selection. Yeah, I, what an incredible job uh, head coach Mike McDaniel has done there so quickly. Uh, you see him taking accountability for games that they lose, motivating the team to a 30-0 to zero win against a great defense in New York. I mean, you can just kind of feel the excitement there. And if you're an everydayer over at Locked on Dolphins, I know you're feeling the excitement from Kyle Krabs, who is absolutely pumped up about this Miami Dolphins season. They were my dark horse, not to brag, not to brag, but they were my Super Bowl dark horse. So let's see if uh, maybe, super, maybe home field advantage will carry them to some good fruition when it comes to that. All right, so Miami Dolphins at number five, who, who just, just ahead of them at number four sits there. I have the Dallas Cowboys now at number mm. four. And truthfully, until this past week, and I had them at number two. I, I thought this team, this oh, team wow. is built to win come playoff time as well. They have probably the strongest combination of offensive line and defensive line in the NFL. I, I think they've surpassed the Eagles even in that regard and how dominant they are at the lines of scrimmage. But you still see those flaws in run defense. I still worry about them in that regard. And then they can't ignore the Dak Prescott dud games. And so that's why I dropped them down to here. But this team is as complete as it gets in the NFL. Very few weaknesses on this roster. They are, any of these top five teams can win it all. They are as dangerous at their peak as anyone else in the NFL. Yeah, let's see if they can break that uh, playoff curse, too, that they've been dealing with a little yeah. bit later. That's that's another whole other conversation, though, when it comes down to those playoffs. Let's see. Let's see him get there and let's see what happens with them there. All right. So Dallas Cowboys at number four. Who you got at number three? Maybe controversial here, but it's a team that just Ooh, love handed it. their butts to the Dallas Cowboys. It is the oh. Buffalo Bills, the high end of this team. I still say that this is the most talent they've had offensively of this sort of new Josh Allen era, right? Yeah. Where you have James Cook, a dynamic running back who can catch passes out of the backfield. You now have a legitimate number two in that offense, and it's not Gabe Davis. It's Dalton Kincaid and what he can do, moving the change, being a reliable guy for Josh mm -hmm. Allen to go to on key third downs. Those are things that they just never had in the past. And so I just think that this Bills offense isn't going to go into the lulls we saw come you know, past playoff times. And I think they can put up points on anybody, as we saw against the Dallas Cowboys. They have multiple ways to win. So I know they started off slow, but I think this team is very, very dangerous in the AFC playoffs right now. Yeah, that that's a big-time defense that they ended up competing with, and not only competing with, but beating, navigating, getting all that done. So I, I got to – look, I, I believe in the hype when it comes to Buffalo, and we've seen it before. All right, so over the course of the past few years, we've seen the Kansas City Chiefs sitting atop the NFL – at number one, I'm curious if they potentially land at your number two or if another team sits there who you got at number two. I do not have the Kansas City Chiefs in my Ooh. top five right now. Maybe oh. call it an overreaction, but no, I am I worried about that offense, that offensive line, those offensive tackles. And I just think that defense has played above expectation for this season. Mm -hmm. I expect a little bit of a regression from them, whereas this Baltimore Ravens team, who I have at number two, I do not expect regression. They are too talented on that side of the ball. They are the best defense in the NFL right now, in my opinion. They can suffocate you in a number of different ways, and there's really no answer for them because they throw so much at you. There's no solving it because every week is a different look that they're showing the opponent. So mm -hmm. super dangerous on that side of the ball. And, and then the Ravens, Lamar Jackson, we just talked about them, the MVP candidates. You don't want to go up against him, right? You don't, he's going to be a headache for you all game long because all it takes is one crease and he's off to the races or he's beating you with his arm down the football field. And so you got to bring your hard hat and lunch pail 
to beat the Baltimore Ravens any given week. Man, it really feels like we've just turned a page in the NFL not having the Kansas City Chiefs in the top five. And we didn't even have Patrick Mahomes in the MVP conversation either, which, by the way, I think is deserved. I don't think these things are unwarranted, but just feels different the NFL all of a sudden. So just to recap from five back to two, we got the Miami Dolphins. We got the Dallas Cowboys, Buffalo Bills, Baltimore Ravens. I think I know who's wearing the crown, but who's got the crown here at number one? It is the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. And so that yeah. means <laughs> Super Bowl from last year. No Eagles, no Chiefs in my top five mm. right now. They're just mm -hmm. not playing up to snuff, right? They, they truly yeah. are. don't look like top five teams at the moment. And that's what we have to base it on. We can't go off past history, even though these are, those are talented rosters. This 49ers team right now looks like an absolute house. I mean, yeah. at full strength. Oh, man. And obviously, with some of the injury histories of people on that roster, that's a knock on wood sort of thing to say at full strength with the 49ers. But at full strength, they're a steamroller, man. They have yeah. been blowing teams out. That offense just has your head spinning as a defensive coordinator. It's like, okay, we take away Christian McCaffrey. Then they throw screens to Debo Samuel. Okay, we took away Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey. Brandon Ayuk, you can't cover him one-on-one. -on -one, so what do you do about him? Well, now we got a guy who can cover Brandon Ayuk one-on-one. -on -one. George Kittle sprinting down the field for 60 yards on you. You just have no <laughs> options if you're a defensive coordinator. Take away one thing. They beat you somewhere else. And, oh, by the way, they had the best play caller in the NFL doing it <laughs> to get to all those guys. Yeah. And then on the flip side of the ball, Chase Young, Nick Bosa, is uh, they fleeced the Washington Commanders to get Chase Young at the deadline. And then Nick Bosa is obviously just one of probably three, you know, tier one of pass rushes in the NFL, mm -hmm. along with Michael Parsons, Miles Garrett. You don't block him single. You can't single block him. He's going to take over games if you do that. That's just that's a tough team to beat right now. Yeah, I mean, that's undeniably the best team in the NFL. I'll borrow an anecdote that Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker said over at Lockdown 49ers not too long ago. This is a team that's got a wide receiver playing running back, a running back play running back playing wide receiver, a wide receiver playing tight end, and a tight end playing wide receiver because Juwan Jennings is Juwan out here Jennings. pancaking guys, right? Like yeah. it's just and then you have the best play caller in the NFL, as you mentioned on the offensive side putting it all together with a fantastic defense. It's as complete a team as you're going to find in the NFL, led by right now, as we were just discussing, the MVP front runner at quarterback. How much better does it get? I'll tell you what, it can get a lot worse. That's for sure. And that's what we're going to be looking at next. We, we've been positive this entire episode so far, Mike. Let's dig our heels in and get a little negative here before the holiday season. We're going to play a little Grinch and give you our bottom five teams in the NFL as we continue on with this holiday special edition Locked On NFL Renorigs podcast here as a part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Maybe you're one, maybe you're a fan of one of those top five NFL teams we just talked about. Heck, maybe you're a fan of one of the bottom five teams we're about to talk about. It doesn't matter. They're your favorite team. You should go and see them play without having to break the bank to get it done and without having to do weeks of arduous planning as well. Game Time's got deals all the way down to an hour after the events start, whether that's NFL, NBA, MLB, not even sports. You've got theater, you've got music, you've got concerts. There's so many other things for you to choose from as well. And you can even see the view from your seat before you buy the tickets. It doesn't get any better than game time. Download the game time app today, create an account and use the promo code locked on NFL for $20 off of your first purchase terms apply, create an account and use that promo code L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, wrapping up this holiday edition of Locked on NFL and the Renner Ranks podcast. Make sure you're checking them both out. You can subscribe and follow for free on YouTube wherever you get your podcast. And, of course, we've got your favorite local NFL shows covered here across the network as well. Just search uh, wherever you get your podcast. All right, Mike, we've been very nice. We've been very positive, right? Time to step over to the naughty side of the naughty and nice list. Who are the bottom five teams in the NFL? Let's start with the, the fifth worst, or what would that be? Number 28 in the NFL, if I do the quick math? Yep. I have the <laughs> New York Giants at number 28. And I know they have more wins than some teams that I left off here. And I know the Tommy DeVito hype has wow. reached a fever pitch in recent weeks. But this is still not a good football team. The offensive <laughs> line is still a yeah. very tough ask for even Tommy DeVito, who's been very mobile and been uh, able to s survive behind it at least. But it's still a tough ask week in and week out for anyone to play behind. The defense is really 
top heavy in that they need Dexter Lawrence to play lights out games for them to have a chance really week in and week out. So this Giants team, they've unfortunately played their way out of any quarterback conversation here, at least the elite guys at the top, but they are still not, in my opinion, a very talented roster, a bottom five team in the NFL. Yeah, that that New York Giants team I got to see play live when they came to to my home city of New Orleans to play against the Saints and um, left a lot to be desired, even with all the hype, right? They were riding the three-game win streak. There was a lot going on there and then just kind of fell flat on their faces. I think play calling is a big issue there too. I don't know that they know how to use the talent that they have consistently enough for them to even build off of anything at this point, but it's going to be an interesting conversation come the off season, the changes that could potentially happen there. And Hey, that's what happens when you're a bottom five team in the NFL. Let's move another spot down. Let's go to number 29. Yeah, I have the Arizona Cardinals here and this is even with Kyler Murray. It's just because yeah. this was the most talent depleted roster in the league heading into this year. It, it just, mm -hmm. Were. Steve Keim left an absolute barren cupboard when he left as GM. Yeah. They had one of the worst drafting stretches I've seen over the past decade or so. So, yeah, the Arizona Cardinals in bad shape. But I do think the job I've seen from Jonathan Gannon there as head coach is at least encouraging, right? I, I think there are signs that he could be the guy there for a good portion of time. You just need talent, though. And right now, they ain't got it, unfortunately. Oh. How do you feel about where they are at the quarterback position with Kyler Murray? Is that a spot that they should maybe pay a little bit of attention to over the offseason, or are they good to maybe build around Kyler and continue to move forward? I think Kyler's more than good enough to build around. He, yeah, I'm with he was that. an MVP candidate, you know, think way back. To, that sounds so long ago now, but it was only two years ago, right? 2021, <laughs> right, right. midway through the season. That was even midway through the season. It was like week 12. It was about this time of the year, week 12, week 13. Yeah. What was it? The Packers game on like a Thursday yep. night. Yep. Had some injuries. He threw the game ending pick in that one. I think DeAndre Hopkins got hurt in that one. And then all of a sudden went in the tank. So I do think the talent is still off the charts. There's still a lot more to be tapped into. And I think you have a lot better play color now than you had back then in Cliff Kingsbury. So I'd build around him, but there's a lot of building that needs to be done at this point. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But hey, at least they've got the cornerstone, right? Like the hardest piece to get. Maybe they have that in the building. Yeah. All right, let's get into the 30s here. Number 30, not quite 32, but what's the division really? Well, at number 30, who you got? I have to go with the Los Angeles Chargers here. And it's obviously oh, because of no more Justin Herbert. But this team right. is putrid, man. Yeah. And obviously, no more Brandon Staley now as well. But when you give up 60 points plus to the Las Vegas Raiders, I had a, I had a, I honestly had a conversation with putting me even lower than this, but they did beat the Patriots <laughs> a few weeks ago, and it's because they held them somehow to zero points, and we're going to get to them in a little bit in their offense. But <laughs> this Chargers team just has – they either have a guy who's highly paid and underperforming, a guy who's like good at his position and probably injured, or an absolute nobody. Yeah. <laughs> that is their roster right now. It right. is brutal to watch this team. Um, I, I do think that they are, they were, and are in need of a hard reset with this roster and, and a forward thinking approach of how to build around Justin Herbert, because it's not a one year we're back in it next year. It's kind oh, of no. like, we have to make good decisions and then maybe two or three years down the line, we're back contending. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be such an interesting one to track over the course of the off season. A lot of people looking at it as the most desirable head coaching job that will be available. But as you mentioned, it's one that you also kind of have to buckle in for for a couple of years yes. where you really start to see it all benefit. How patient will the Chargers be about that? How patient is that head coach willing to be about that? And look, I mean, not only did they give up 63 points to the Las Vegas Raiders, but the week before that, the Las Vegas Raiders lost the game 0-3. to three. Yeah. yeah. Matthew, Matthew, not Matthew Stafford. Sorry, I don't know why I said Matthew Stafford, but Brandon Staley. I was thinking the other Los Angeles guy who's doing a much better job deserved exactly what he got uh, for the charges there. All right, let's go to number 31 here, just shy of that top spot. I went with the New England Patriots here. There Their offense has been a chore to watch <laughs> by any <laughs> measure, by any visual uh, attribute you want to put on it. It's just they're stuck in years past they, they they have not modernized uh since the brady era unfortunately and obviously that's why you get reports about bill belichick and then parting ways this offseason but it's also a talent thing you you have guys you have a depleted offensive line you have weak arm quarterbacks throwing to receivers that don't separate it's mm -hmm. just a recipe for disaster there in new england and so another team that this ain't a one-year turnaround. It's yeah. not we're competing yet again right away. Like there's too many valuable positions that they need 
to completely rebuild in their wide receiving core, their quarterback position, offensive tackle, <laughs> like pass rusher now at this point with Matthew Judon getting up there. It's every hey. position on this roster seemingly needs more talent. And that's how you end up the 31st best team in the <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, the Hall of Fame hangover is hitting in New England. It is hitting big time. And now they're going to potentially also hit the Hall of Fame head coach hangover to add on to that. That's going to be very, very tough and a big job uh, for whoever ends up inheriting that whenever they get it. So going back here, as we looked at 28 through 31, we looked at the New York Giants. Then we went to the we went back to the West Coast with the Arizona Cardinals, stayed there with the Los Angeles Chargers, then jumped back to the east side of the US with the New England Patriots, who holds that number one, dreaded number one spot in this situation as the worst team in the NFL, number 32. Yeah, we'll travel down that East Coast to yeah. the Carolina Panthers, who yeah. hold the number one spot in this, but not the number one overall pick, unfortunately, because they <laughs> traded that away for Bryce Young oh, last gosh. year. But right. their offensive line is the worst offensive line in the NFL. Their receiving core is the worst receiving core in the NFL, for my money. And that's that's a combination to not look good offensively, <laughs> if that's not pretty obvious. But And then Bryce Young is – Look like a rookie too. I mean, mm -hmm. there's been he's made rookie mistakes. He has done things. He's not substantially overcome a poor situation. And, and while I think they have talent on the defensive side of the ball, I don't think they're so far away there from competing. I still think there's players in that room that they can bounce back quickly if they get mm -hmm. things right on the offside side of the ball. It is, you know, you're about five to six starters away from even fielding an average offense at the NFL level, and that's. That's just a lot to ask. So the Carolina Panthers, I think, could have a quicker path to success with their cap situation. It's not as disastrous sure. as some of the teams we've mentioned on this list. There could be turn things around. If they had that number one overall pick, it would be a lot better, but they obviously don't. So there's a chance things turn around here quickly, but it's also a team right now that just I would not pick them <laughs> against anyone else in the NFL flat out. Yeah, well, except for the Atlanta Falcons, of course, nine to seven. Just want to <laughs> just want to check that box real quick. No, but yeah, I, I think you're absolutely. I mean, you're spot on there. They're, they're, they're the worst team based upon like what they have, but also what they don't have, and that's a really, really tough thing to 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 kind of to climb, right? That's a tough mountain to climb. You need those five starters, as you mentioned, but you don't have the draft capital to get them. So you got to hope on free agency. There, can you convince free agents to show up? Maybe a lot of that's going to come down to that head coaching hire as well. We talked about the most desirable job being the Los Angeles Chargers. Feels like the Carolina Panthers are kind of on the opposite side of that spectrum, maybe. Yeah. You want your owner calling plays for you? <laughs> oh, the gosh. Games, and oh, Carolina's God. the job for you, by all means. <laughs> yeah. You're love yeah, it. Yeah, head over. Enjoy. Have a good yeah. time. Oh, man. All right. Well, it's been such a blast here. And, Mike, happy holidays to you, of course. Happy holidays to you every day for being here and for joining us for this holiday edition of Locked on NFL and the Red Ricks podcast. Make sure you're checking out Mike on social media and, of course, over at The Messenger as the NFL uh, draft analyst there. And you can catch him on your favorite social media at Mike Renner underscore. And of course, every single Monday through Friday over on the Renner Ranks podcast. You can also catch your favorite local shows and all of our great national shows here on the Locked in NFL podcast on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts as well. For Mike Renner, I am Ross Jackson. We will see you here. Happy holidays. Happy New Year to you all here from the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.